looking at the future of king penguins. I think they have a natural tendency to want to be in a group. Gosh, we really do have some They've followers. Quite a following here, yes. And who will be leading the charge? Oh yeah, he's standing tall. I'm Alize Carrere, an environmental anthropologist and National Geographic explorer. This is my friend Tom Ritchie, a naturalist who spent decades in the field. Together, we'll discover what it means to be a modern explorer. Today, we're going on an expedition to South Georgia, an island within the Antarctic climate. Welcome to the King Penguins Homecoming Dance. If you watch these guys over here, you think they're just standing around, but there's a lot of action going on there. There's some courting. You see there's a male following directly behind a female. Oh yeah, he's standing tall. You see the pair right yeah. there, belly to belly? Aww. They're just touching each other. And when they do that, is that just a warmth thing? Or is no, it... it's just a, a pair bonding. Aww. They've got each other. These guys are here to find love. The mating season begins between September and November. Some are here in South Georgia. After a couple pairs up, the female lays an egg. Both parents take turns incubating it, and about two months later, you end up with a little chick. But don't get too attached to its appearance, because they change fast. Believe it or not, this is a juvenile king penguin. The first explorers here actually thought they were a totally different species. But first impressions can be deceiving. That's why today, scientists have to be a bit more diligent. For the chicks to grow so quickly, their parents have been working overtime. Throughout the summer, parent penguins head out into the frigid waters of the open ocean in search of fish. Once they've caught their fill, they beach themselves back at the penguin colony. Even though they're home, they've still got to figure out where they left their chicks. You'd think that would be impossible. These crowds number in the thousands. So to find each other, they sing. It might not sound pretty, but these are parental love songs, which is why this beach is so noisy. Once they reconnect, the parent lovingly vomits into the chick's mouth. Technically, it's a regurgitation, but it's a sight to behold either way. It won't be until next summer that these young penguins finally shed their downy coats and head to the ocean for the very first time. When you watch wildlife bonding with you, you really feel that urge to want to be a part of it and protect it. These guys are so human-like in many respects, and we, we love that. You can't help it. <laughs> I love these guys. Gosh, we really do have some We've followers. quite a following here, yes. Mom, they followed me home. Can I keep them? <laughs> look at, look at, look at, look at. It's amazing. I think they have a natural tendency to want to be in a group. We've got groupies, Tom. <laughs> We've got groupies. <laughs> King penguins instinctively huddle together for protection against the cold. It's why these colonies are just enormous. And understanding the structure of the colony is critical to the future of king penguins. That's why every expedition should come back to the science. Which is why we do a penguin head count, otherwise known as a census. A census is an official count or survey of a population. But how do you know how many penguins there actually are? Well, I did some digging and found this paper. 
The abstract, or summary of the paper, holds the key to counting penguins. Researchers took a bunch of photographs and counted each and every little dot. They even counted some penguins in person. Comparing their data to historical photos, researchers found that the colony had grown from around 50,000 birds to more than 130,000. It's hard to know for sure why. It might be because they are finally recovering from overhunting in the 20th century. That's the easy explanation. But it might also be that climate change is throwing their numbers out of whack. Their population is growing as the glacier in the background shrinks. As the climate changes and warm temperatures cause glacial melting, there's more beach for the penguins to rear their chicks. In the past, there just wasn't as much space. But today, that's not the case. Here we go, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. It's good news for now, but as the research paper points out, who knows what will happen as climate change impacts the penguins' food sources. And now look, they're just sort of gathered around us. Good research sometimes results in more questions than answers. But that's the great thing about science. There's always more to discover and more questions to ask. I don't think they want us to leave. Our tools are different, our technology is different, and the landscape is changing. Exploring means something very different from the past. But there will always be room to observe and protect the wonder of our world. And that's what makes a modern explorer.